Our next topic is burns. Burns are injuries caused by direct tissue damage from exposure to either the sun, chemicals, thermal, like boiling liquids, and even electricity. Now, as you know, the skin is made of three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous tissue, that fatty, bubbly-looking tissue. Now, after the layers of skin, we find fascia, muscle, and then bone. So in first degree or superficial burns, we have damage to the epidermis, the top layer. So we see dry with blanchable redness, meaning that when you press on the wound, the redness goes away. Now, second degree burns called partial thickness burns, we have both the epidermis and dermis that are damaged. So the key sign to know is painful blisters, huge NCLEX tip. So write down these key words here. Red, moist, and shiny fluid-filled vesicles, or basically blisters, that often leak fluid. So just think two layers of skin for two-degree burns, or second-degree burns. Now, third-degree burns are full-thickness burns. We have three layers of skin destruction. The epidermis, the dermis, and possible subcutaneous tissue. Described as key terms, dry, waxy, white, leathery, or even charred black color that is non-blanchable skin. Big key terms for exams. Now, fourth degree, also a full thickness burn. These are the worst burns by far as they go through all the layers of skin down to the muscles and even the bones. A unique sign is the lack of pain since the destruction of nerve endings from all the burn charred areas. Even though they may look similar to third degree burns, these are far worse since they're far deeper. Now, for minor burns, like the first and second degree burns, these do not typically need hospitalization and can be treated outpatient with wound care and dressing changes. Whereas major burns like third degree and fourth degree, these are deadly medical emergencies requiring intensive care, which we'll cover in a moment. So first, care for minor burns. Say a client is cooking and then burns themselves. Or say they spill a boiling pot of water on an extremity. So we always teach the three C's for pre-hospital care. Cool water, cover the area, and clothing removal. So for pre-hospital care, C for cool water, key terms, is briefly soak the area. And no ice, no creams, and definitely no antibiotic ointment to open skin. The key term there is open skin. So this can lead to additional damage, and the creams, lotions, and antibiotics may interfere with the assessment from the healthcare provider. Now the second C is cover the area with key term, clean, dry cloth. So write that down. This is done to prevent infection and more damage in the pre-hospital setting. And the last C is clothing and jewelry removal near the burn, if not adhering to the burn skin. Only the HCP should remove anything adhering to the burn skin. So please be sure to write that down. Now Saunders mentions, the nurse instructs firefighters that in the event of a tar burn, which is the immediate action? Cooling the injury with water. Yes, that was our first C there. And the second question, for a chemical burn injury, the nurse instructs the employees that which is the first consideration in immediate care? Removing all clothing, gloves, and shoes, and any undergarments. Just strip down like you're going skinny dipping. Now for Kaplan, that Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys. See you next time.